Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and here we are to talk about Airbnb. Airbnb, oh my lord. I can't believe I'm in the Airbnb business, and I, I gotta quit. I really gotta quit. I just can't take it. I'm just losing money. I don't want to book with me anymore. Okay, that's enough of that. First things first. If you live in Canada and you're doing Airbnb, you should be paying attention to what just happened in British Columbia. This could sweep across the country and if it does, you will be affected depending on what they do. This is what the politicians don't understand and I get why the media has a bone with this. Uh, they don't get it though and they'll never get it. They just don't understand. The reason Airbnb exists in the volume that it exists. And yes, there are too many Airbnbs right now. It's been oversupplied and that's just perfectly fine. People will get out and it'll come to balance. Oh, I forgot. This video is brought to you by Costco. Go get your extra virgin olive oil. No, I'm just kidding. We're not, I'm not it's not sponsored. Uh, Airbnb is, woohoo, it's over. No, it's not. Now, if you live in Canada and you want to rent a place and then Airbnb it, can't be done. Cannot be done. There's, a, you know, maybe single things somewhere, uh, one-offs could be done, but otherwise, forget it. There's no insurance for Airbnb other than through Airbnb in my country. So if you, uh, you get somebody that finds out you're doing this, they'll shut you down. They, they don't want it. Now, I don't know why they don't want it. They just don't want it. I know why they don't want it. They don't want three people Airbnb and in a building and the rest of the building being long-term tenants. Uh, they just don't want it. That's just how it is. But is Airbnb going bust? Well, I would say no. Is it down? I would say yes. Is it challenging? Yes. Should you get into it today? Why not? Well, Look at your market. So, why would you get into Airbnb today or if you've been doing it for five years like me, should you keep doing it? Well, first of all, the property I Airbnb is a vacation destination, not a regular place inside of any city, anywhere. It's a vacation destination and it is fully booked every summer. At this time of year, the posting of this video, there are no bookings. Oh, maybe there'll be some in Christmas, you know. I get workers throughout the year and stuff like that, but honestly, the bulk of the business comes four months of the year. If you go to Sylvan Lake to book a place, Sylvan Lake, Alberta, in July and August, good luck. If the Airbnbs were gone, there would be nowhere to book, and every one of those businesses would get less people. There are no hotels, there are none. There's none, they're full. Everyone is full at that time of year. So yes, there's oversupply in the wintertime. There is no way anyone is long-term renting these places that are currently on Airbnb. I have talked to five or six other of my fellow competitors, because I only compare it to people that have a four bedroom place. If you've got a one bedroom apartment or something like that, you're not my competition. I'm a four bedroom. So, is Airbnb bust? No, it's not. Are interest rates up? Yes. Are interest rates high? No. In the country I live in, if you want to go redo your mortgage right now, you're going to be around 5.5% for the next five years. We do not have 30-year fixed rates in Canada like the United States. We don't have that. In the United States, I believe it's getting pretty close to 7.5%, 8% for their 30 year fixed mortgage. And yes, if you have an Airbnb, you wanna start doing it today, you're gonna to have to look at those numbers. But that doesn't mean it's bust. If you've been doing one for two or three years and you enjoy the pandemic local stay, stay in your state or province or area. I'm gonna take a vacation in my area. I'm gonna go about 200 kilometers away, but I'm gonna stay in my area. This is what was going on for two years and a little bit. And so it was wonderful. But I go back to five years ago when I started. What was I getting? And if I take the inflation rate and everything else, am I getting more than I was back then? No, I am not. 
Airbnb is down, bookings are down. But their whole platform around the world, bookings are up. So how is this possible? Well, people are traveling again. So one of the things I want to point out about the Airbnb bus strategy and where people are talking, if you live in an area where they are going to get rid of short-term rentals on all types of things, I seriously think you should sit down and do a business plan of why do you still want to own that place. Trust me, if they were going to get right, contact every Airbnb host. I sell real estate where I live. The average price of a house where I live is $711,000 for a single family home. You can buy places for two hundred dollars because I just sold one. Uh, maybe that would be a good Airbnb. Well, it was a townhouse. You could do it, technically. Uh, but nobody would. It's not a place where you would do it. Because technically, you can do Airbnb anywhere. But there are places you should do it, and there's places you shouldn't. But just remember, it's oversupplied. And long-term tenants in uh, Airbnb that you use to Airbnb, you will never do unless you've been a landlord for a long time. So let me explain a little something how Airbnb came around. A lot of people say, well, there's too many of them and the laundry. No, there's demand for this product at certain times of the year. And the hotel motel industry, uh, they're big lobbyists, but you know what? They, they weren't building this. So people start, and they were doing really well because guess what? I got a whole apartment for a week. Ooh, well, that's been around since I've been around. I've said this before. Airbnb has been around for as long as I, I've been alive. But it was only for one week you had to book. It was very hard to find them. You had to use a travel agent sometimes. There were services in certain towns. Sylvan Lake is an example where I live in Alberta, Canada. Other places like that. Vail, Colorado, uh, Whistler, BC, uh, you know, places like that. These one week rentals have always been around. They've been around forever, but they were very hard to find. They were expensive and they were only for one week. So where Airbnb took it, now you can book one day, two day, three day, whatever you want, okay? So this is why people think it's busting. Too much supply. Well, you're absolutely right. There is too much supply. And a lot of these are gonna drop off, and who's gonna drop off? I think the mamby pamby non-business people are gonna drop off because they don't know what they're doing. And because they don't know what they're doing, they're short-term thinkers. They're thinking because this year is bad, and next year might be bad, I will never get back to the boom years. Well, you better take a look at your business plan and say, how much do I really need and how much is in that area? The other side of the coin, what I'm concerned about is they may ban these things all the way together, all over the place, uh, and uh, if the BC legislation goes across the country, um, I'm not sure if I can still Airbnb or not. Because I've looked into it and I'm kind of thinking maybe I won't be able to. So you got to look at this. Are they getting rid of it? Can you, are you going to be forced to sell or turn it into a long-term rental? And you will not turn it into a long-term rental. If you are not a landlord currently and dealt with long-term tenants, there is no way a short-term rental will turn into a long-term rental. You cut your losses and call it a day. But Airbnb is not bust. It's just different. The economy has changed. Are we in a recession? No. They've been talking about it for 14 months now. Recession, recession, recession. I mean, I can't believe the news yesterday. All they talked, recession. There's no recession. There's not one coming. Is it slowing down? Were we going down the road at 150 kilometers an hour and now, 95 miles an hour, and now we're only doing the speed limit? of 110 kilometers an hour, because that's the speed limit. Well, if you're driving at 150 kilometers an hour and you slow down to 100, it feels like you've stopped. You're like, why am I going so slow? Like, honestly, you feel like you stopped, but you're not, you're still, you're not zero. You're still doing 100, and this is where we're going. We are not gonna go into a recession, period. Mark my words, we are not. The central banks have got it at 5%. No further. They will push us into recession if the central banks go to 7%. Yep, we'll go into recession. But if they keep it at five, bring it down to four and a half for the next two to three years, 
will be perfectly fine. If you own an Airbnb and you're Airbnb, you should have planned on this. I don't know how anyone would think what the pandemic numbers were because they were great. My Airbnb was almost 50,000 bucks a year coming in off it and now we're back down to the 32 to 35,000 a year. That's just the way it's going to be. Next year is going to be the same. In fact, I'm expecting it to be a little less, but uh, I'm planning. I'm, I'm looking at my investment. I'm five years in, I'm going to be in my sixth year. I'm like, okay, what do I have to put into the property? What is it generating? What will it generate? What kind of pricing strategies do I have to incorporate? Everything changes. If you think the Hilton and the Marriott and the Motel 6 do the same thing every year on their pricing and how they run their businesses, you're crazy. They make changes all the time. So if you're running an Airbnb, you will make changes. One of the things about Airbnb bust that is absolutely true in very large cities like Vancouver where the average price is $1.8 million for a single family home. Toronto average price $1.4 million for a single. A lot of foreign buyers that come in and bought these places, they only live in them four or five months of the year and then they Airbnb them. You know, why keep them vacant? If this stuff comes in, they're just, they're just going to be vacant. They will not long-term rent because they can't. They want to use them four or five months of the year for themselves. This is where Airbnbs made the money. I use my property for myself, but I rent it out otherwise. Otherwise, it's just sitting there vacant all the time. Never long-term tenant this property. I will never, ever, ever do it. And 90% of everyone else on Airbnb are in the exact same boat. No way they're going to be long-term tenant, and that's just the way it is. So if you're going to get into Airbnb, there's something you need to know. One, there's a lot of forces out there to push you out of this business because it's kind of been oversupplied and there's a lot of them in certain areas and people are like, man, this is crazy. Certain times of year, there's nobody living here. But you know what? All those people that own those places are paying their taxes, paying their utilities, paying their insurance, making sure their property is maintained top notch so all the services in the area for maintaining a property are maxed out landscapers painters all that kind of stuff they're all busier than busier and busy because you've got a place you're renting out to people it's got to be in excellent shape the governments are getting all the income that they would normally get and guess what the roads aren't getting used as much <laughs> wear and tear is down for the but they don't see that oh we need more places so Airbnb is not bust. It's changing though. And if you want to get into this business, you better sit down and do a five-year plan. And nobody does it. They do it on a whim. No, you have to have a plan. You have to take a look at it. You've got to take a look at where it's going. How many are in my area? Am I going to be affected by some sort of tax? And trust me, I don't care. Did you hear about California? 15% uh, tax on Airbnbs to affordable housing will have no effect on Airbnbs whatsoever. It doesn't matter. If your place, let's use round numbers so it's easy to know. Let's say you rent it for $1,000 a day and they bring this 15% tax in. Okay. The person booking is gonna pay the 150. Not, not you, you're gonna get your $1,000. It's on top. It's not included in the price. It's not reducing what you're getting. Everyone booking knows there is a 15% tax or a 10% tax or a 25% tax. It doesn't matter what it is. You set your prices based on what it costs to run your business and for you to create demand for your product. And that's what you need to do. These other things that go on top are irrelevant. Everybody knows they're there. When I book a place, I know what I got to pay on top. Hey, tell me. And if it's not something I want to do, I just don't go. And this is why sales are down, not bookings are down, you're not getting as many bookings, okay? But that doesn't mean it's not profitable and good to do. You just need to adjust your expectations and please people. Airbnb is difficult, very difficult. There's no such thing as passive income. You want to buy five of these and then go live somewhere else and have someone else manage them, you will not have five-star reviews. They will not do well. And you'll be like, why are people making videos about making so much money? You know, I'm just sitting here, cash flow negative. 
Negative, negative, negative. It's work, it's a business. Treat it like one. So thank you for tuning in. Airbnb is not bust, it's just difficult. But if you wanna do it, you can do it. But know the demand in the market that you're in. If you're gonna make an Airbnb in a certain market, know that the demand is there. And if you have lots of competition, and you're like, oh, I'm adding another one. What makes me different? Nothing. Well, maybe you shouldn't do it. So, business decision. I know it's work, gotta use your brain, and my brain is full. I need to purge some stuff. Have yourself a great weekend, and thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the future.